And this morning on this beautiful Palm Sunday, we're going to join together in singing and giving God honor and glory. So I encourage you to sing along with us. We're going to have words up here on the screen. Uh, and if, you know, if you're comfortable, you can raise your hands just and surrender to God at any point this morning. You can clap your hands together. Uh, but let's just enjoy giving him the praise and honor that is due his name. Here we go like this. Here we go. Darkness run and hide, you bring the broken back to life. Only you can, only you can. You set me free from every chain, you fill my heart with songs of praise. Only you can, only you can. Jesus, you're the only
chance already to grab any communion elements. We have tables on the, the corners of the room, the front, the back there. And you'll notice that the the, the bread and the cup are all um, in that same thing. There's two cups stacked on top of each other there. Uh, if you're watching online, this would be a great time to, to go in your kitchen, find a, some, some juice, a piece of bread if you could. But, you know, today we celebrate, uh, you know, Palm Sunday. This is a time where, you know, when we all know the story when Jesus rode into Jerusalem and People were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. They were waving palm branches before him and laying him down. Uh, but you know, it's so interesting to me that while, while people were shouting Hosanna, people praising his name, you know, we, we know the story that a week later they were shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And you know, that's always intrigued me of, of how that can be. Within one week, you got people praising Jesus, the Messiah, and a week later, yelling for him to be crucified, to be killed, to be murdered. And you know, I don't think it's very different than what we feel today. You know, it's so easy to see what's going on in, in our world today, to, to hear what's going on in culture, to see what's going on in news, and for that to infect 
our mind, to infect our thoughts on how we think of things. See, the truth is, if we don't hold on to Jesus, who is the truth, in fact, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You know, so God is the truth. He is our standard of what truth is. But you see, just like uh, what happened 2,000 years ago, they didn't, they forgot that. They didn't see that. They didn't hold Jesus as that truth. So, of course, the culture around them, the people around them, whoever shouts the loudest, right, that's who you tend to say, oh, maybe they're right. But we know here today that Jesus is our truth. And so no matter if the culture is trying to shout louder or throwing things in our face, we know that Jesus is truth. So if that truth does not match up with Jesus, then it cannot be true. And so today, you know, while we take communion, while we take this piece of bread and this cup of juice and we hold them in our hands, we're we're proclaiming that Jesus died for us and that he rose again and that one day he will come back again for his church. But while we do that, I hope today that you can look inside your own heart, examine your own life. You know, are you holding God up as truth? Are you holding the word of God up as truth? Or are you being persuaded by all that you see? You know, the Bible even speaks to this. It says to hold on to God's truth or every wind and wave of doctrine might push you. So today we want to hold tight to the truth that Jesus is, the truth that Jesus saved us. He gave us life. He is the creator of all things. He made every single one of us. He made the universe and the expanse. And he did all of this because he loves you. So let's pray together today. God, thank you for loving us, for giving us life, for giving us breath. God, it starts with knowing that you are truth, that you are life, that you are just as you said you are. You are the way, the truth, and the life, and that nobody comes to the Father but by you. And that's why we hold on to this today. That's why we take communion today, because you are the way, the truth, and the life. So God, today, I pray that you would help us as we look inward, as we examine our hearts, just to hold on to that on to that. Even when others may say that that is not truth, God, we know that you are truth and we will hold on to that today. So we lift you up this morning and we exalt you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray together. Amen. Well, as we continue to sing and worship, feel free to take those elements whenever you're ready.
morning, church. Oh, welcome. Good to see everybody in the house and those of you watching online. In fact, chime in and tell us where you're from. We want to know. Uh, hey, if you are newer with us, you're tuning in for the very first time, the best thing that you can do to get connected to the Oasis is to be able to download our church app. Uh, if you've never even filled out a connect card and you're like, oh, I've been, I've been here for like three years and nobody knows my name, you know, fill out the connect card so we know who you are. Uh, so much going on, the Easter services, uh, those cards in the seats, that's not saving a seat for anybody, but those are for you to pass out if you want to do an invite. And there's also e-invites, just do it all online or, or, or even just say to somebody this week, hey, why don't you come to church with me? We'll go have breakfast or something afterward. You can actually say that verbally to them, <laughs> invite them to Easter. People are, God is drawing people unto himself. We have the ladies luncheon, uh, then after that. Uh, another way to stay connected is through our weekly e-news. If you can check that out. Youth camp fundraiser coming up. The, the youth, they, they make burritos and like we donate money. They help them go to camp and they're really, really good. And uh, they're probably really, really fattening too. <laughs> I'm just saying. We don't have the calorie count on there, but that's okay. Um, Greg Roberts, just want to bring attention to Greg. He's running, he's part of our church. He's running for the Metro Board. And we just always love being able to uh, support uh, the people from God's church to be able to be in a, in a publicly held office to be able to influence our culture because we need a little influence in our culture today from God's church. Uh, we also have opportunities to serve. If you're like, if, uh, if you're like getting connected, you're slowly getting connected. Uh, some of the things we're trying to build out, one of them is our church online. Uh, so during this service and our next service and then our whatever service, uh, we're trying to get volunteers, especially we're looking at Monday night, uh, maybe Tuesday night. We've not pulled the trigger, but to have church live uh, where you can just sit at home and communicate people as a host and say, hey, glad you're here, glad you're worshiping with us. And uh, if that interests you to be able to do online stuff like that and be able to communicate with people, to pray with people online, uh, let us know that. Email us there. Um, Meals on Wheels, we need some volunteers for that. We have a connection here. Uh, and Kids Zone, we're always looking for... Uh, helpers, leaders to be able to help out in that area. So we're just really highlighting those areas uh, right now and have for the past few weeks. Uh, if you're joining us like for the very first time, we are the Oasis. I'm Pastor Greg, and uh, we're glad that you're here. You're tuning, you're tuning in if you're watching. Uh, this is our final message in this series, Sinful Habits sinful habits. What's a sinful habit? Well, nobody knows. That's why we're talking about them. But uh, what we're trying to do is just highlight some of these habits that we've gotten into that are really sinful. And we might have be numb to that. What are, what are we talking about? Well, we know there are big sins like murder, uh, you know, and rape uh, and everything. But there are these sins because we live in a post-Christian culture. This has never been more apparent than it is right now. There's a statistic that I just got a hold of several weeks ago. 6% of Americans, only 6% have a biblical worldview. Only 6% follow Scripture so it's no wonder that we don't know what sinful habits are. So we've been covering some of the habits that culture might say, well, that's not really a big deal, but it's really a big deal to God. So we're, we've been looking at four of those. There's so many more, uh, but we're highlighting four of those. We have a memory verse right here, where, and we're trying to draw attention to, you know what, we're sinners. That's just the basic fact that we, we have a hard time understanding today in our culture. But read this with me from 1 John 1, 9. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. That's good. You got to know the address. First John 1, 8 and 9. Uh, so we've been talking, we highlighted in the first week, white lies. And did you know that you lie two to 20 times a day? I know, fess up, you're a sinner. <laughs> and, then we, and then we talked about juicy gossip. And nobody was able to have a conversation that week because we realized what it is that we talked about. Last week, we talked about two types of anger, like fire. Fire can warm you, it can burn you. That same way with anger. There's good anger, righteous 
righteous anger and their sinful anger. Today, the sinful habit we're going to look at today is envy, insatiable envy. And we really need to acknowledge, you know, on one level uh, or another or one time or another, we're all prone to envy. It affects us all, and it, it, and it affects us early in life. You can see this with, with the youngest of kids. They're playing, uh, you know, with whatever. A kid comes in, they're playing with their toy, and what happens? This kid gets envious of that toy, and it can happen to any of us in an instant. And, and I don't know about this, but could it be, I mean economically i mean i look at it here like inflation inflation's crazy has anybody been infected affected by the inflation yes it's crazy right now um, uh, i've got three young kids in the house 14 11 and 7 and uh, the t two older ones, they've like lost uh, most of their baby teeth and everything. And, and when the tooth fairy comes to our house, I just want you to know that when the tooth fairy comes, I've been known to be very conservative financially, maybe even tight. But when the tooth fairy comes and, and retrieves a tooth, uh, the tooth fairy leaves $2. And uh, yeah, and uh, so just uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I was talking with a family in the lobby and the, the child was showing me they had the teeth gone. I said, oh, did you lose a tooth? Did the tooth fairy come? Yeah, well, how much do you get when the tooth fairy comes and gets your tooth? Well, the tooth fairy leaves us $20 a tooth. And I'm looking around making sure none of my kids see that. Because, whoa, I mean, inflation, right? Uh, my seven-year-old learned about that. And when he heard about it, he said, Daddy, uh, maybe we can find out which tooth fairy they use and we can ask that tooth fairy. <laughs> to come to our house. Envy, it affects us all, it really does. But is it really a big deal? Really? Let's look at what Scripture says to answer that question. James chapter 3 says this, but if you harbor bitter, what? Envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth because it says such wisdom does not come down from above, but it's what? Earthly, unspiritual, of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every evil practice. Is it a big deal? It's profoundly a big deal. I mean, it is a, 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 a sinful sickness that affects us all at one level or another. And today we're going to ask God to help us out with, with envy. So I want to look at a definition of envy. If you're filling in your outline, if you have uh, the notes downloaded on, on your device right there, um, what is envy? Envy is resenting God's goodness in other people's lives. Well, you know, they've got it and I want it. They didn't deserve it. They shouldn't have it in the first place. It's, it's resenting God's goodness in other people's lives. And then it goes on while at the same time we're ignoring God's goodness in our own life. It's resenting God's blessing upon somebody else while ignoring all the blessings that we have in our own life. Now, where do you find envy? You're going to find it in all kinds of places. I mean, you might have experienced physical envy before. I mean, ladies, you see a girl that's got like a cuter figure than yours, and you're always going around saying, well, I wish my butt was smaller, my chest was bigger, my legs were longer, or whatever. And guys, it affects you. It's like, look at his hair. <laughs> he still has a hairline. I wish I had more hair on my head than I do on my back. I mean, whatever it is. I mean, it could be so it's physical envy. There's relational envy that pops up. I mean, two girls, they're good friends. They're unmarried. They're not married. They're hanging out all the time. One of them gets engaged. Well, it's just not fair. She's engaged and she's flapping that ring all the way around like she's something else. And there's envy, right? Or it's in marriages, and, and you see people talking to me. You know her husband, he helps out around the house. He's a handyman. He's got a good job. My husband, he's a bump on along, doesn't do anything. I wish I had that. Or my wife, she's, look at his wife. He's always, she's always encouraging him. My wife, she's, you know. And there's relational envy. Some people envy different stages in life. 
I remember when you were young, oh, when I turn 16, I won't get my driver's license. Oh, when I turn 18, well, when we turned 18 back then, we moved out of the house, you know, or, or we're going to go to college and it's going to be really good. And, uh, or when I get out of college and get a real job, things are going to be really, really good. And, and you get a job and you're like, well, if I was in college, if I lived at the house again, and, things, and, and it's like we're, we're envying those stages in our life when, when we had it better, you know. Uh, a lot of people have talent envy, if you know what I'm talking about. I mean, I wish I could sing like so-and-so, right? Or I wish I could dance like Napoleon Dynamite. I mean, anybody watch, anybody know Napoleon Dynamite? Is that the best, <laughs> right? Uh, I wish I could hit a golf ball like Tiger Woods. I wish I had the intellect of Elon Musk, you know, and there's talent envy. And there's material envy. Is there not? I mean, it's so common. If I just made a little more money, like he makes money, like he does, then I could drive a car like he drives. Or if I could just buy a car, <laughs> or if I could just buy a car with under 200,000 miles on it, I'd be content, right? Or, or if I could ha just have that car with that bigger engine, oh, it's all about the horsepower, right? There's material envy in all kinds of ways. And it's, it's envy is resenting God's goodness in somebody else's life. And, and we're ignoring all the blessings that we have. Um, what about scripture? Where do we find envy in scripture? Everywhere, everywhere. Uh, we looked at Cain and Abel uh, last week, uh, and Cain envied Abel. And why is that? Because Abel brought a better offering, and it's so much so he didn't just envy his brother; he killed his brother, <laughs> right? And then we look at into Genesis 30. Rachel envied Leah, and and why did she? envy Leah because she couldn't conceive Leah could. 15 verses later, it flops that, that Rachel envied Leah, uh, or Leah envied Rachel because of Jacob. Uh, so it just flip-flopped. Uh, Joseph's brothers, I mean, Joseph had all these brothers, and he was the favorite son. His, his dad made him a coat of many colors, and he had these dreams, I'm going to rule over you. Well, the older brothers didn't like that. They beat him up. They threw him in a pit. They sold him into slavery because of their envy. 1 Samuel 18, Saul, the king, envied David. Young David, who was the shepherd boy who turned warrior, and because the people loved David so much, they, they, they had this song about him. They made up a song. It went kind of like, Saul has slain his thousands, David his tens of thousands. Probably had a better tune than that but it's not written out in scripture, right? And I envy people who sing well. And some people, they call them prison singers. They're always behind a few bars. <laughs> and they can never find the right key. There are those people. Then Isaiah 14, Lucifer envied God. This is where it all began. It is of the devil. Luke 15, or Mark 15, it tells us why Jesus was handed over to the chief priests. It's because the chief priests envied Jesus. Is it a big deal? Well, it's earthly, it's unspiritual, and it's of the devil. Well, what does envy do in our life if it goes unchecked? Look at Proverbs 14. A heart at peace gives life to the body, but what's envy do? It rots the bones. It's deep. It's deep. Socrates said this, Envy is the daughter of pride, the author of murder and revenge, the perpetual tormentor of virtue. Envy is the filthy slime of the soul, a venom, a poison, which consumeth the flesh and drieth up the bones. It's an ulcer of the soul. It's like gangrene. It just eats at us from within. Exodus 20, God said as one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not covet, do not envy. So I want you to ask yourself today, who or what is it that I envy? So think about that. And, and I hope that the discussion guide, it's at the bottom of our outline today, uh, that you have this discussion with your family this week, that you talk about this in your connect group this week, that you have this discussion with somebody. Who or what is it that I envy? I mean, I envy preachers who can get up and preach these deep, deep, deep sermons. And so when I get up and preach, 
I, I'm about practicality. I want to preach life application, life change. Let me get up and inspire you to, to live a godly life. I mean, that's me, but I have people come up and say, I just love listening to Charles Stanley. Oh, he can preach an hour on one verse. Well, I preach 20 verses and I can only get 30 minutes out of that. That's just the best I got. I'm doing the best I can with that, you know, and I envy people that have the weekends off like you. <laughs> Now, I know some of you are watching online and you're at work. I'm glad you're here. Good to see you today. But there are the, I envy those people uh, that have the weekends off. Uh, what do I do on the weekends? Well, not a whole lot. Uh, I'm just, just trying to save the world. <laughs> and you, <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> yeah. I'm just heading to the lake. You know, that's you. Every now and then I want to say, okay, this weekend they can all go to, no, I don't say that because <laughs> I'm going to the lake. No, but, but, it, but I do. I mean, I, I envy people who, cause, cause for five years out of high school, I, I, I worked, I clocked out. I, I, I'd love to, I envy people who can clock out and go home without work. Sometimes it seems like my job never ends. And I know many of you have those jobs too, uh, but I, I envy, I'm prone to envy that. What is it? that you envy. It's earthly, unspiritual, and of the devil. So what are we to do about it? So we're going to look at some verses. We're going to launch off uh, this verse. First of all, we need to avoid any and all kinds of evil uh, that's going to tempt us, uh, envy, that's going to tempt us to, uh, to be envious, any, any of that. So avoid any and all comparisons. Uh, 2 Corinthians 10, we read this. We won't dare, what, compare ourselves with those who think so much of themselves. They are foolish to compare. But this is our default tendency right? It's like, it's just, it's, it's in us. So to, to look at these comparisons, the disciples constantly were doing this, this banter back and forth. When, when Jesus restored Peter, there's a story where Peter had kind of fallen away and Jesus was restoring him. And Jesus said, Hey, this is how you're going to die. Uh, but above all this, feed my sheep. And what was Peter thinking? He's just like, what about the next guy? He's like, what about John, the one whom you love? How's he going to die? You know, and, and it's interesting to me that John uh, never died a martyr's death that we learn later on. And it's interesting to read how Jesus responded to Peter in this moment in John 21, because it says that Jesus did not say that he, John, would not die. He only said to Peter, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what's that to you, Peter? Whoa, right? Jesus is saying, it's none of your business. We're talking about you, Peter. This is about you, not John. The, the disciples are constantly going, oh, who's the most important? Who's going to sit at Jesus' right hand when we come into the kingdom? Who's the greatest of us all? Being envious, it's earthly, it's unspiritual, it's of the devil, and oh, does it rot the bones, I'm telling you. So we never are to compare. It brings out this ungodly sinfulness. Galatians 6 says, each one should test his own actions without what? Comparing himself to somebody else. And there's some believe this has never been a bigger problem than it is today because we live in a world with people have, we, we've got, especially in America, have more acts, more things than anybody ever in the history of the world. And we want more things, don't we? Sociologists actually say that social media contributes to this, that it causes envy because what happens? We scroll through social media and we go, oh, they got the perfect life, right? Mine's, mine's the pits, right? I mean, I heard about two moms that hated each other on social media, a working mom uh, one was a working mom and she was like, I just hated you tell, talking to the lady because you're the perfect pincher stay at home mom who does crafts, have structured time with their kids. And it made me feel so guilty. And the stay at home mom was like, I hated you because you had a life. You're out in public, you're doing things. And I haven't fixed my hair since, uh, or seen an adult since, uh, the COVID lockdowns, you know, or whatever. Two people hating each other because of what the other person had. Maybe you've been like this. You're at home all by yourself, not going out anywhere on a date. You're single. You're eating, 
you're, you see your friend on social media eating steak and lobster, and you're eating lean cuisine, <laughs> and you hate lean cuisine, right? Maybe you've been there. Maybe your friend, it was a special day, maybe Valentine's Day, birthday, wh- whatever the day, Christmas or whatever, and they buy their, their spouse a brand new vehicle, and they post it everywhere. And you're like, I wish I had a new vehicle. <laughs> I know I want to get off of Facebook, right? Or she has pictures of brownies, and, and they, they look delicious, but you're not looking at, at the brownies. You're looking at her beautiful kitchen with the countertops and little pool knobs, and you, you're like, I want a kitchen like that, which had that. Or your friend, they're at the beach again for the second time, and you can't even get to lake because you work all weekend long. <laughs> ah! You know, and we compare everybody is life. They have it so much better than mine. Researchers did a study at two universities. They had the students, uh, the select group, look at Facebook for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, a third of the people said they showed signs of depression and envy was the number one emotion that they felt just through scrolling down for 30 minutes on Facebook. No, we're not going to compare. We're not going to do that. So what are we going to do? How do we, how are we going to avoid this sin of envy? Well, two very, very biblical and positive things. If you're taking notes, the first one is this, instead of resenting God's goodness in somebody else's life, instead of resenting that, we're going to celebrate it. We're going to celebrate God's goodness in other people's lives. Uh, and God teaches this principle in Scripture. Romans 12, 15 says this, Rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Somebody repeat that phrase with me. Rejoice with those who rejoice. So we want to rejoice. We don't want to be mad about that or envious about that, right? And, and one, a great example of this, I think, is, is uh, to pull from the UFC or, or the MMA or cage fighters. Anybody know, anybody watch UFC? You know what I'm talking about? You watch that? You guys do need Jesus. <laughs> That's got to be sinful. <laughs> right? No, I love it. I, I love it. I love watching that. That's why I'm doing this. And some of you are going like, what's MMA? Well, watch Napoleon Dynamite. When he's kicking, he's training to get into the cage. But these guys, look, they get into this ring, if you don't know what it is, this octagon, and they fight, skilled fight. This isn't a Will Smith slap that was heard across the world. This is MMA fighting it's mixed martial arts if you don't know what that's in and they get in the ring and they beat each other man sometimes there's blood flinging around it's all around it's all over their body they're tough they fight and when that fight's over if it's been a really good skilled close fight what do those guys do the loser will go up and congratulate that guy you deserve this and not only that they'll sometimes hug and embrace the winner. Congratulations. Sometimes they'll pat each other on their butt. <laughs> Open-handed. An MMA fighter would never clap. <laughs> Cupped-handed. I think we got a. I think we got a video of this. <laughs> I mean, look—he's beat up. Look how beat up that guy is. I mean, he's saying you deserve this. Hey, you can go back to the scripture. That's pretty good. <laughs> But somebody else gets what you want, you congratulate them. You know, you did good. I mean, one of the greatest examples in Scripture, we talked about King Saul and, and young David. This is a great example of this, of, of envy. We just mentioned that a little bit ago. If you don't know the story, King Saul had a son named Jonathan. Jonathan, young Jonathan, and David became really close friends. Well, Jonathan, he, he knew all of his life he was growing up going, oh, I'm going I'm to be the king over Israel one day. I want to be the king over Israel. But God had a different plan. God anointed David, his best friend to be king. The second in line, uh, the second king, uh, you had Saul, then we had David, uh, to be the king and ruler over all. Well, you think that Jonathan would be envious about that and, and angered by that uh, because Saul, <laughs> Saul was, and he was out to kill David. But Jonathan had a totally, profoundly different perspective. And we're going to read about his response. This, look at his response 
to when Saul was trying to kill David, his, Jonathan's best friend. Jonathan said, don't be afraid. He said, my father Saul will not lay a hand on you. I'm going to make sure of this. You will be king over Israel, and I will be what? Second to you. You're going to be king. I'm going to help you to be king. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to protect you. I rejoice with you. You got what was rightfully mine, but I'm going to support you all the way. And he patted him on the butt. <laughs> I know. You got to have fun, right? And don't get mad. I'm not adding to Scripture. I'm not doing that. I'm just, you know, embellishing it a little bit. Um, but you wanted the promotion, and your best friend got it. Well, you go up and you say, congratulations. You've been saving for whatever for so long, and you've told your neighbor about it. They went out and bought one before you. You go up and say, I'm so glad you were able to get that. You're praying for God to do this in your life. And he's not answered you yet, but he, but he answered your friend, like the similar request. You go up and say, praise God for God answering that prayer in your life. You, we rejoice with those who rejoice instead of resenting their blessings. We're going to celebrate it. That's the first positive thing. We're going to celebrate God's goodness in somebody else's life. The second positive thing we're going to do when we're tempted to envy, what are we going to do? Instead of ignoring God's goodness in our own life, we're going to recognize it. We're going to embrace it. We're going to embrace the goodness of God to us. Ecclesiastes 6 says, Better what the eye what sees than the roving of the appetite. That's what envy is, right? The roving of the appetite. This too is meaningless. It's a chasing after the wind. It's sinful. It rots the bones. It's better to see... What God has put right in front of you, and for you to recognize that and to embrace that, instead of looking over at somebody else's greener grass. We've talked about that before. Listen, your appetite will always roam. You, you'll always be looking for more, tempted to, oh, they've got this, they've got that. Well, they've got, it's newer, they've, it's bigger, whatever it is. Better what God has given you. God, I'm so thankful for that. Thank you for blessing me with this. I am celebrating your goodness. Then a roving of the appetite to greener lawns. Now, it's just a fact in Pueblo West, somebody's going to have a greener lawn than you. <laughs> I mean, it just is, right? But don't forget this principle. We say it often around here. Just because their yard looks greener doesn't mean that they don't have some poo in their yard. <laughs> just, just, it's a principle. Don't forget it. Their grass may look greener, but they've got poo there. Now, I usually say this with marriages, that the grass always looks greener, but it applies across the board. It does. It, it applies everywhere. And I'll give you an example of it. I heard twice this past week said to me, Oh, pastor, it must be nice only to work one day a week. <laughs> yeah, my dad still, when we talk, what's it like to work one day a week? This guy, I'm not comparing, but let me just share a little bit with you. He retired at my age. He's been playing golf and fishing all week long for 27 years. I'll be working for the next 27 years. So I'm, I'm not just saying, I'm not saying, you know, uh, don't get me wrong. I love my life. I've got a great life. No question about it. But there's poo in my yard too. I mean, just because you think I work one day a week and you know who said that. <laughs> You're watching online right now. Uh, there, there's, there's bad stuff in everybody's life just because you don't see it. It doesn't mean that their perfect kitchen is perfect. There's poo on the floor maybe. You just don't know, right? So I'll say it again. We've got to remember this biblical principle. If the grass looks greener somewhere else, water your own yard. Be, be blessed. Be thankful for what God has given to, to you. Thank you, oh God. And, and for me, I, I think this is a habit that, that I'd gotten into, and, and I don't know if God revealed this to me or, uh, or what, but, but I got into a habit of qualifying my blessings. You know, like, God, I, I just love our, our house, and we call it God's mansion, and it's like, God, I, I'm, I'm so thankful, and I'll be talking to somebody. I love our house, but, you know, I just wish you know, whatever. And I'll do, and, or, you know, I love being a pastor, 
but you, you know, and I'm like, and it's as if God spoke to me one day and said, kill the butts. Kill the butts. So what should I do? Oh, God, thank you for our mansion, period. Lord, thank you for the job that I'm able to do, period. So maybe God will speak to you today. You've got to kill the butts. Be thankful, no more butts. And, and embrace the goodness of God in your life. Look, look at this verse of Scripture. Always be joyful. Keep on praying. What's this next phrase say? No matter what happens, no matter what happens, no matter what happens, no matter what happens, comma, always be what? Thankful, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Do you belong to Jesus Christ? Well, be thankful, be blessed, be fulfilled in that. Envy, is envy a big deal? Sure it is. It's earthly. It's unspiritual. It's of the devil. It rots the bones. It really does. You know, recently I was uh, just talking with somebody this past week, and they were talking about some poo in her, you know, some difficult times in her yard or in their life. <laughs> and and um, they were reflecting on that. And, and the conversation transitioned to Brandon and Amber uh, Hayes. We've been praying for Amber. Amber's been on our prayer wall. We've mentioned that up here. Uh, and, and go to our prayer wall and pray for the people on our prayer wall. So many people need prayer. I need prayer. We all need prayer. Uh, but Amber, uh, for three months since January, has been in the hospital on a ventilator bypass it's just amazing and, and and god's done some amazing miracles in her life uh the big one right now that we're praying for is that she could keep her leg they're wanting to amputate it because of gangrene and, and her leg or toes and part of her leg so we're praying that god could restore that um, but me and this person and we're talking about that and and we were just reflecting on how God done so many miracles in her life. And, and, uh, and, and she's been uh, conscious, Amber has, for like two and a half weeks or so now. But she'd been on a vent, and uh, they, they got her off the ventilator, which is a miracle. They, they capped it, yeah. And she, she, was con she was able to, to, talk, to, to text. I mean, that's how good she got a, a couple of weeks ago. And, and last week I got a call from Brandon midday, and I'm like, oh, no. He, he, we usually don't talk midday. I answered the phone. He said, Greg, Amber called me, and she spoke. She spoke. She talked to me. Yeah. For the first time in 90 days, <laughs> she talked. And uh, I was talking with this person, and they were like, you know, here I'm complaining about my life. And then we're talking about Amber and praying for her. And she says, when I think about that, how could I just not be thankful for everything that I have in my life? You know, Lord, help me in this. Look, we embrace God's goodness. We rejoice with those who rejoice. And we rejoice with God, what he's given to us. And look, we've been talking about all these sinful habits and, and we've got them. We know we've got them. There's more than just four and, and we're wanting to overcome them. And I want you to know, you're not going to be able to overcome them in your own power. You need Christ's power in you because it talks about those of you who belong to Christ. That's Christ's power. We're celebrating Easter Je next week, his resurrection, but Jesus lived and he, he was crucified. He was buried he rose again and there's power in that when we're in Christ Jesus and we've got to ask ourselves do do we have his power in our life so I want to look at this verse from Titus 3 it brings up envy and God's power all at the same time it says this our lives were full of evil and envy we hated others and they hated us but 
then God, our Savior, our salvation, showed us his kindness and love. How did he do that? He saved us. We're talking about the before and after. He saved us not because of the good things we did, but he loved us so much because of his mercy. He, and here's a reference to baptism right here. He washed away our sins and gave us new life new life through the Holy Spirit. The Bible is very, very clear that through our faith, through professing faith in Jesus, we're baptized into Christ. He forgives us of our sins, but he gives us the power through his Holy Spirit to overcome. We've got to have his power to overcome. I want to celebrate today with several people who decided I want to be an overcomer in Christ Jesus. Check out My husband, Adam, and I have kind of been talking about it for a few weeks now, and I just felt like it was something that was weighing on my heart. I've never been baptized before. Um, I'm about to be 30, and then I went to the IF conference this last weekend, and especially after Friday. I mean, Saturday just kind of, you know, <laughs> solidified it, but after Friday, I was like, man, mm. this is it. Let's, yes. let's get this going. Yeah. Why have I waited so long? Because I felt it in my heart. <laughs> I have really struggled a lot. Um, within the last two, two years, I struggled with addiction. Um, I fought that for a long time and I never thought God would pull me out of that. I thought, this is it, this is my life, this is it, this, I, I can't get out of it. And I, he did, he pulled me out of that, that struggles and, um, and that was really hard. And I believe, I believe that Jesus is the Christ. That Jesus is the Christ. The Son of God. The Son of God. And I receive him. And I receive him. As my Lord and Savior. And my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. I like that. pray with me. Father, we celebrate those who just experienced new life by just confessing your name and following what you ask of us in scripture. Thank you for new life. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins. Father, I thank you so much for your unbelievable goodness to us, your mercy and your power in us. Lord, forgive us, we pray, when we're unspiritual, earthly, and of the devil, <laughs> surrendering to the sin of envy. Forgive us when we sin against you. And for those who need to call upon the name of Jesus, I pray today that they would not leave this place without making that commitment to you. We love you, Lord. And we just pray that you would use us this week to invite others to share in your goodness, that there is a world that is dying and literally going to a place of darkness and separation. May we be vigilant of sharing your good news. This is so good news. I mean, if we had the cure to cure Amber's gangrene, we'd, we'd give it to her. If we had knew the cure of cancer and, and somebody, we, we would give it to him. We'd share that. We've got, you've got the cure to eternal life. And we are your mouthpiece to share that good news. May we be vigilant to share what you've given to us. Thank you, oh God, that you can look upon us and say, I forgive you, my child. I love you so much and want the best for you, my child. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, let's go and stand together one last time as we close out rejoicing in God our Savior. 
You also see up there on the screen, there was different ways that you can give this morning. Uh, please give uh, during this last song too. You can simply just go on your app or go on the back and give of those. In water you turn into white And open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you There's none like you Into the darkness you shine And out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you there's none like you And our God is greater Our God is stronger God, you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power Our God Our God darkness you shine and out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you there's none like you come on sing it church our God is greater services to choose from. Uh, so have a great week, everybody.